Hello everybody, it's Disney Mad Haven here today, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Cold War and my opinions on it. So let's just go ahead, let's jump into a game here, a little bit of a match going on. Now, Cold War, you know, it, it's expensive to get into, it's very expensive to get into. The first upgrade on the starting tanks, you're looking at about 1.1 million. Um, a couple days ago, I had a couple of messages through my email. And I don't look through my email too much, but I was really surprised to find that someone took the time out to find my email and send me two codes to be able to get me progressed a little bit further throughout the line to get me the T-72 AV. And to that person, I'm going to say thank you. You were a massive help with helping me get through this a lot quicker than I would have by myself. So truly thank you. I He doesn't... Oh, I already bombed it. It's a he... Yes, it's a he. I'm not worried about it. You know, you know who you are. Thank you. Now, Cold War is that game mode that, well, I'm not exactly super worried about it. It's, it doesn't differ. It, like, it, it's a big difference compared to what you see over on uh, the World War II matchmaking. So the standard matchmaker. Uh, at the moment, there's a couple of bugs going on, but nothing too serious. If anything, a lot of the things that they've added to the game, um, they need a little bit of rebalancing. For instance, 10% top speed. I think it'd be a lot better if they just had like a 4 kilometer and then a 2 kilometer in reverse, a 4 forward, 2 in reverse, having that as a set. Because on the slower tanks, it's not as beneficial to put it on unless you're, uh, for instance, playing the mouse and you want to use all three of them. Let's say the advanced terrain system and then the new drive system i can't remember what they're called and then to run fuel on it to get that extra 20 percent top speed to get you four kilometers and 18 in reverse it's really fun if you guys haven't tried it out in the t95 or any of your slower tanks it even though it's only four kilometers or two kilometers however much you're looking to get it's a massive difference and it makes it, it's just so much fun um getting into it cold war is not the game mode for a beginning player. This is meant for people who are, you know, you got a couple tier 10s and you're looking to try out something new. And the World War II matchmaking with the prices and everything else, you know, strategies needed to make silver. The higher that you get inside Cold War, however, the more silver that you're gonna be making. So if you're stuck in Air 1 right now, just know that by the time you hit Air 2, you're gonna be making 80,000 to about 100,000 credits a match as long as you're averaging 3,000 damage. Even if you die, you're still going to be making a massive profit every single match that you play. Now, the Cold War, it's it, it's extremely pricey. That's really the only thing I can say about it. But the introduction with all the new maps, the new equipment, a couple of perk reworks, there has been a couple of them. And for instance, uh, the mouse... I've been playing the mouse a lot more, a lot more ricochets coming up. I do believe that the penetration system was rebalanced a tad bit. That's making it to where tanks that have a lot of armor are now able to stand up against, well, stand around to get of an IS-7. Um, back when 6.0 first came out, I ran some tests for the IS-7 and the mouse because the IS-7 is just a really good test tank. It's got 303 APCR pin, high velocity rounds. And then you have your 250 standard APs. So we used the standard APs to test the penetration values. And they said that they readjusted them. And we found that using AP, um, they were able to go through the front turret of the mouse. And now they're not. So it feels like they did change a little bit of the penetration system. Which, it's 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 nice that they did that. There's been a little bit of a change. Um, I've been participating in a lot more comp as of recent. As you guys have noticed from a lot of my live streams that I've been putting up the past couple of days. Uh, it's going to be continuing on throughout the summer and the weekend. So if you guys want to tune into that to find out some really strong positions on a lot of maps. Because not just does it work in comp, but it also works in public matchmaking. And it would just be super helpful if you guys could take the time out to, to learn a little bit. You know, it's like I, I'm here to be educational. I'm not here to be, you know, greedy, angry. I don't want to be salty. I mean, there's moments that, of course, you know. We all get hit by artillery and well, you know, it's like stubbing your toe in a vacuum for the fifth time in a row and yeah, you got some words to say. But other than that, keeping it laid back, it's going to be nice. Um, Cold War though, honestly the game mode and this update, the season pass is not that impressive. The T-55A 
honestly, if they bring it to World War II matchmaking as the tier 9 that it's supposed to be, I'm hoping that they give us, well, the tier 9 variant if you bought the Ultimate Season Pass because I'm not going to pay for the tank twice. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, changing up my job, you know, it's like I'm not making as much as I was before, so primarily I'm just taking it slow and just using all the ideas and strategies I can to help me get gold inside the game, which right now I can say that the key cards, I've had a couple lucky drops on those key cards. Um, for instance, the confidential one, the, the blue ones, I had a WZ-112, nope, 111. I had a 111 drop for 12,400 gold, and I'm going to be holding on to that gold until they release a new tank or until they uh, drop something else off to invest a little bit more cash into the game to be able to, you know, buy a new tank and help you guys know how to play it and get it to run right. Now, the gameplay that you're seeing, a lot of the players that we're going up against, there was a lot of bots inside the lobby at the time, and even though there was bots, it was still the PvP queue which means that silver and experience was still being applied as if you were playing in the PvP mode. So, massive amounts of money if anyone managed to get into this within the first two days that it was out and grinded it during that time. I'm already in Air 3 on the T-72B, and I'll tell you now, once you hit that Air 3 and Air 2, the difference is tremendous. Now, jumping more into it, you have, you know, your, your Air 1, which is the M46, the T-44, T-54, and then the T-47. I can't remember the top tanks. I do know that they had the Patton, and I just can't seem to remember what the Russian one was. I'll take a quick look real fast. So it's actually the Object 165 would be the top of the Russians. Now, each Air has a top tank. And the way that you want to look at these top tanks as they are potentially the top of that air. You are not going to go against air 2 or air 3, and that's why they cost so much to be able to get your hands on is because, well, it's the top of that tree. You're, you go through three tanks and suddenly you're at the top, and you don't even need to go any further. That is the top. Now, the silver, looking at it, 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 it adds up. It's expensive. To be able to go through one of these entire lines, you're looking at about 50 million in total. Just rounded, top of my head, I'm going to say 50 mil. So, getting into it and grinding it out, it's going to take a long time. But, even if you're just stuck in one air, air 2 or air 1, even in air 1s, you're going to be hitting about 80,000 to 60,000 a match. Air 2, you could be looking at 100,000, anywhere between 100,000 to 80,000 a match. So primarily, you know, it's like you, you get yourself up into that little tier category and you play 10 matches just to make a little bit of silver to be able to jump back down to World War II if you got to make a little bit of extra, you know, moolah to the side to jump back down and into it. it. A lot of the mechanics inside this one have changed as well. Uh, a couple of tips I can give you guys. Do not rely on heat rounds. Heat rounds, there's a lot of spaced armor inside Air 2 and Air 3, so heat rounds... Uh, tend to become obsolete. If you guys did not know, heat rounds lose 5% of their overall penetration value every single 10 millimeters of space armor that they go through. And for instance, the T-72 AV that we're right now in has got over 230 millimeters of space armor before you actually manage to get to the 90 millimeters of the turret. You're better off firing AP, APCR into the turret and trying to hit the flat spot up on the back of it, which is 90 millimeters, so you should be able to rip right through it. Uh, depending on the angle that the eye is holding. Um, playing these tanks like you're inside of a mouse, you know, whenever you're side scraping, you know, angle your turret a little bit to give that thigh a little bit more of an angle. I have not yet played the Americans, but I heard that they're kind of lacking a little bit because they don't have as much space armor in Air 2. Air 2, it's an M60, and a lot of those don't have a lot of space armor. So, there is that. Now, overall, the quality of life improvement that they have brought to the game I, I'm a big fan of it. Really big fan of it. The crew system, which you can now select crews individually to be the only thing that appears inside your garage, really nice improvement. However, they did take away the clear filter, which is a little bit annoying. It'd be nice to have that back, because that was something that was extremely useful in my opinion. Now, jumping over to how this is going to be affecting the game. Um, honestly, over the past couple days, I've seen the cues having a lot more players inside them, more than normal. 
and whenever I say normal, you know, we're looking at like a 180 to 260 sometimes inside the queues, and occasionally I see it spiking up to about 320 to 340. So I do believe I can say that this is a really nice improvement to the game. Uh, there's a lot more going on and small little events coming up. Just it, it's a lot of fun, you know, get on, play with your friends, go nuts on it. Now, for World War II, with a couple of things that have changed with the penetration values, there, there has been a little bit of a difference inside the penetration values. Oh. Um, along with that, you know, slower tanks are becoming more viable to use. Um, if you've noticed, the matchmaking is being a little bit faster, but at the same time, it's slowing down a tad bit. And I enjoy slower matches. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy those slower matches. Now... The World War II matchmaking, it, it needs a little bit of improvement. You know, there's a couple things that need to be need to be touched up on. A little bit of balancing issues inside Tier 10, Tier 9, and Tier 8s. I find that every single time a Tier 10 is buffed, um, some of the Tier 8s and Tier 9s tend to suffer a little bit more. But then they, they try to rebalance it by uh, buffing up the 9s, but then Tier 8s overall just tend to suffer a little bit. But with the new movement mechanics that they've added for the top speed bonuses and everything else, I find that the Tier 8s... Where they were lacking, it's helping out a lot more. Now, talking about the equipment. Um, you now have a new page that you're able to go inside. This is not equipment related, by the way. So whenever you go X to customize your vehicle, or I can't remember what the uh, button link on PlayStation would be. But you're able to go into Module Viewer now and actually see your overall tank statistics. And to me, that's just a massive quality of life improvement there. And I'm looking forward to getting the T-34 and low video out for you guys whenever I get the chance to get those recorded and set up. Um, I've been a little bit busy the past couple of days and past couple of weeks. So I've been struggling a little bit with it, but I'm trying my best. I mean, we all are. You know, we play tanks to pass the time, and it's a game that we fell in love with and we're stuck with it. Me, I'm personally stuck with it. All the newer games that are coming out nowadays, they're, they'll catch my attention for maybe about a week, and then after that, just... They, they lose interest, but World of Tanks has always brought me back. It's a game I really appreciate because of that. So it's always a great, it's a great game to come back to just because I know I can come back and not much changes. Don't get me wrong, 6.0 was a massive change and this Cold War edition is a pretty big change, but I'm getting used to it and I'm honestly with the Cold War, I'm enjoying it. It's a different, it's a different play style. It has true vision involved. A lot of the guns have got massive amounts of range that they're able to use. And overall, it's it's just a different feel with the same game. And I, I think it's got some room to grow. Now, talking about the new equipment added to the game um, and the, the most recent patch notes that came along with this update. So, if you guys did not know, um, Gunsmith, back when it was 6.0, officially released, was broken. The 30% overall accuracy that it added, it was overall, your gun did not need to be broken. So it's a 30% bonus no matter what happens. And whenever I was looking at the patch notes and I saw that that was not fixed, I was a little bit disappointed with the devs, but you know, it's, it's kind of a little thing that it needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed soon. Because it's making a lot of tanks have insane accuracy and you know, now we're getting used to it. I've been running it a lot more in my tanks because everyone else is using it and I just feel like I'm at a disadvantage if I'm not. So I've been doing it a lot. Now, with the new equipment, for you guys, just a tip here. Whenever you're adding the 10% top speed, the best way to look at it is how often do you actually hit your top speed even without the piece of equipment. You'd probably be better off with the uh, terrain system improver, which has 5% horsepower and 5% top speed. So I probably completely bombed the name there. Uh, the traction system gives you 10% max speed and chassis haul rotation speed by 10%. Which, you know, if you're lacking a little bit in haul traverse speed, so full rotation, that piece of equipment can really help you out. But if you're looking to get more of the top speed, advanced powertrain with plus 5% max speed and plus 5% horsepower. You know, keep an eye on the horsepower. Vehicles with 500 or so horsepower, it's not going to benefit those tanks as much compared to how it's going to be benefiting tanks with over... 800 to 700 horsepower that have a power to weight of like let's say 14 for instance 
If you have a power to wait for 14 and your tank doesn't weigh a lot, and you're able to max out your speed driving on flat land, then maybe the 10% is going to be a better one to run on that tank. If not, and you don't feel like you're able to hit your top speed too often, uh, for me, a really good example would be the T54E2 American Heavy Tier 8. It's got a three-shot autoloader and a single shot, which I prefer to use a single shot. But I took vert vertical stabilizers, if I could speak English today. I took verts off of it, and it added the advanced power terrain. And I'm able to max out my speed now at 47. And for me, that's been a massive improvement because there were times that I felt like I was being uh, left behind because I was never able to hit that actual 45 top. And I was more getting stuck around, let's say, 38. Feeling like a T10E5. You know, just at max speed and that's all you're ever able to get. So a little bit slow there on that end. Now, talking about the life of the game and overall if you guys should get back into it or just depending on what's going on and how you guys feel about it i find this update to be extremely nice uh they realized their mistake with what they did at the season pass by only adding one tank and i have stated my opinion on this uh, a little bit the fact that they're giving away the atomic when about two seasons ago they gave away the Huntsman. The Huntsman and the Atomic are the exact same tank, just with different names. Just, a, it's a reskin, that's all it was. And from what I noticed, they noticed that they made a mistake. So, as of recent, they gave away the M48 Rompanzer, which is a tier eight German medium tank. It is equivalent to a heavy for how strong the turret armor is at 254 and 139 on the hatch. Uh, kind of sad that I remember that off the top of my head. It fires AP at 205 uh, millimeters of pin, along with APCR with 255 millimeters of pin. Um, I do not remember the shell velocity off the top of my head, but, you know, it's like they're doing that until um, the 5th. So if you guys are able to, log in and get yourself that tank. If you have not yet logged in over the past couple of days or last few weeks, just log in, get a free tier 8 premium. That'd be nice. Now... There's not much left to go over. I think that this update is going to help the game in the long run. With a lot of the new mechanics that they're adding, um, my newfound interest in the game due to comp and a couple of other things that is going on at the time. And looking forward to just helping you guys out as much as I can. And knowing how my schedule is, I do have the weekends. I do have the weekends to myself. So I'm thinking... Let's start up something small, something little. Every single Saturday, about 11 o'clock in the morning, so, you know, 11, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, I'm looking to start up a stream each weekend, going over mechanics, positions, playing the game, and honestly, just listening to you guys and what you want to see. So, if you're willing to tune into that, that'd be really awesome, help me make it a little bit successful, and who knows, it might become a massive thing now with jumping back over to cold war and the modern tanks true vision uh true vision it, it is a nice change of pace it is it really is it's not that bad but jumping back to what we what i want to do saturdays i know that we're kind of just you know jumping all over the place you know throughout the week i'm going to be going to school trying to continue everything that i can and get a ton of stuff put together but with the weekends, you know, my Saturday is my Saturday. And I, I enjoy playing tanks. And I do not mind talking to people about builds, setups, and getting everything put together. So if I could have a, let, let's say, 15 of you on Saturdays. Now, like even, even 20, 15, even 5. Even if it's just two people that jump in. Because guess what? Every single person that I help improve is going to help the game in the long run. And it's going to help you in the long run as well. So, I really don't know what to say about it. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Because, you know, it's not like I can go to your house, sit next to you and be like, well, what about that? What about this? What about this? I can only go over so much inside of a video with a short time span. So, I think the live streams, and if we did a dedicated time to, you know, help people get in, have them go. Tell your friends about it and get a couple other people to get involved. Um, it's the whole reason why I'm doing comp as well. 
is to have a better understanding of the game mechanics, positions and maps, and just a lot better with how your team should be performing and how as a platoon you could get a lot of stuff done. So platoon positions and just a ton of other things that I just want to hit up. So if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, seriously comment. I want to hear your guys' opinion about the Saturdays. Uh, along with that, if you want to catch me over on Twitch, um, it should be linked to my YouTube. If not, it's SOD underscore uh, mad underscore Haven. I honestly don't understand why Twitch won't allow me to have spaces, but it's Twitch. It is what it is, and I can't really complain. So until next time, you guys have a wonderful time, and see you on the battlefield.